Pinakilos ni Pangulong Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. ang Department of Agriculture at Department of Trade and Industry na bantayan ang presyo ng bigas sa iba't ibang pamilihan sa bansa upang masigurong hindi magsasamantala ang mga negosyante lalo na ngayong hindi pa panahon ng anihan. Binalaan din ng presidente ang mga hoarder at mga nagmamanipula sa presyo ng bigas na mananagot ang mga ito sa batas. Sinabi ni Pangulong Marcos na sapat ang supply ng bigas gayon man ay hindi pare-pareho ang presyo nito sa pamilihan. Tiniyak ng presidente na nakikipagtulungan ang gobyerno sa pribadong sektor upang mapababa ang presyo nito. Price supply is sufficient. Prices are, however, very variable. The government is working with the private sector to rationalize the prices and make available affordable rice in the market and kadawa. Uh, binabantayan namin ng mabuti ang uh, pag-supply uh, ng ating bigas at ang uh, pagbantay sa tumataas na presyo ng bigas. Meron naman tayong uh, balita na nagsimula na ang pag-aani sa ano ba Isiha, sa Isabela at saka sa North Cotabato. Kaya dito yung magkaradagdag sa supply natin. Ang binabantayan siyempre natin yung farm grade price dahil yun ang nagpataas sa presyo ngayon at pati yung pag-import ng mga ibang imports at saka ng bigas mismo. So I think na pagka na yung supply natin ay uh, dumami at uh, humaba ang ating reserve ay eh, uh, mag-stabilize na ating mga presyo. Ang bantayan namin ang mabuti para tiyakin na ganun naman. And to say uh, good morning to all our colleagues in the Senate and as well as the uh, our colleagues in the in the executive department. I don't have to mention all the name. I might miss out and magagalit pa kayo sa akin. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, the problem of agriculture is uh, can be discussed during the Senate hearing on the budget of agriculture. But I'm discussing these issues for the benefit of those who will be uh, uh, making the budget <coughs> before so you will know you will understand agriculture so you when, when you make the budget for agriculture you will have some idea of how to do it <laughs> kasi minsan malayong malayo dun sa uh, kailangan ng agriculture first of all i want to discuss rice kasi alam nyo ang rice is the most important uh, agricultural product in the philippines in fact when i passed the rice tarification law which liberalized the importation of rice that was done in 2018 because the department of finance asked me to do it because uh rice has risen from 32 to 40 per, per uh, kilo to 48 to 60 per kilo and you know naman pag nagtaas ang price ng rice the president becomes unpopular Diba? So, ngayon tumataas ang price of rice, you have to be careful because the popularity of the president will be affected. But anyway, I want to discuss the rice tarification law in that context. Now, it was supposed to bring down the price of rice in the market. Okay? Dati po, ang system is, there's no liberalization. The, ang nag import is NFA. NFA. Oh, oh. And, uh, parang may cartel. Kasi for the price of rice to rise from 32 to 40 to 48 to 60, there must be something wrong. So they asked me to take out the power of the NFA and instead liberalize the importation of rice. Kasi parang nakikita nila may cartel na between NFA and the traders and the importers. So I did not write the bill without any study to support it. So we asked the PIDS to study. And we compared Vietnam and the Philippines. Because Vietnam then, and up to now, is the has the lowest cost in the production of palay. During uh, during the time and up to now, uh, Vietnam produces palay at 6 pesos per kilo and the Philippines, 12.50 per kilo. Kaya, <laughs> napakalayo. That's why we import a lot of rice from Vietnam. So, the idea is to make a rice farmer competitive and more productive. So, when they studied, the PIDS studied that, uh, the reason is, number one, Uh, the labor cost in the Philippines is higher by 350 per kilo. So yung 6 peso difference, 350 non labor. So it's mechanization, 'di ba? Pag mataas ang labor cost, then you have to mechanize. And and the other 250 is the productivity of the seeds. So we had to uh, determine what kind of seeds we will use to improve productivity. So we mechanize. So sa, tinanong ko sa kanila how much will we collect if we liberalize the important importation of rice and they said 12 billion. So I put kaya 10 billion 'yon kasi <laughs> hindi naman pwede na eksaktong eksakto gagawin natin. I thought that 12 billion is correct. So 10 billion. So I gave 5 billion to mechanization under Philmec and 3 billion to the fill rice. 
to distribute inbred seeds to the farmers and at the same time teach the farmers how to produce inbred seed because that can be produced in the Philippines. Uh -oh. So 3 billion and then I gave uh, 1 billion to Land Bank and DBP because that will uh, prevent farmers from being victim of 5-6. Uh, and then another 1 billion to uh, TESDA and, uh, and uh, ATI and uh, uh, Philmec, Philrise for training. Because even if we mechanize and we don't train them to how to use the machine and how to maintain the machine. Kasi ang daming complaint na yung pinamimigay na machine ng DA, puro nakatiwangwang lang kasi hindi sila marunong mag-maintain. So, I gave a lot for uh, training on how to operate and how to maintain. And at the same time, uh, uh, at para magturo ng inbred seed production. So, our seeds will come from the Philippines. And Phil Rice promised that from 3.7 metric tons per hectare, they can raise it to 6 metric tons per hectare, which is about uh, doubling, almost double. And if we double our production of rice, then we're self-sufficient and we can export. Kasi ang shortage lang natin, 15%. Oh, eh kung madodouble mo, eh di tapos ang problema, hindi na tayo kailangang mag-import ng rice. But I did not remove NFA. Because there are 4,000 employees of NFA. Gusto ba nyo online ako araw-araw dahil tinanggalan ko sila ng trabaho. But happily, after that, kasi hindi na sila maraming trabaho, kasi hindi na sila mag import uh, they offered a very nice uh, retirement, early retirement package. And I think 50% of the M NFA employees retired. So, nasolved then partially yung over uh, uh, na uh, employees ng NFA. And, uh, we're doing it now. Uh, I think uh, they, uh, Phil Rice said that they can reach 5 metric tons per hectare by next year. And Filmec, <laughs> and daming uh, changes sa Filmec. Mala marami akong consumption sa Filmec. But that's part of the government. Ano, na pag malaki budget, eh, pinapaltan nila ng mga kaibigan nila yung head ng agency. So I cannot stop that. But uh, we're doing our best to do oversight. Now, I saw in your budget that you gave... 30 billion to the National Rice Program. So, yung National Rice Program is parallel to the uh, uh, Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund, di ba? And nung kasabay namin yan, 15.7 billion lang ang budget niyan. Ngayon, 30 billion na. So, alam nyo ba ginagawa ng National Rice Program? They just import hybrid seedlings. And that's very expensive and very expensive to grow. Kasi malaki ang, pro ang, ang production yan, pero ang laki ng inputs. So, yung hybrid seedlings, bagay lang yan sa mayayamang na rice farmers. Okay lang gumamit ng uh, hybrid rice seedlings. Kasi ang inbred rice seedlings is 30 pesos per kilo. Ang hybrid is 250 per kilo. So, ibig sabihin, for rice farmers that can afford that kind of rice seedlings and the, and the inputs needed, Okay lang yon, but not for the poor farmers of the Philippines, which are who are the majority in the Philippines. Kaya gusto ko lang po na pag nilagay nyo na malaki budget ng National Rice Program, wag nyo ilimit sa hybrid seedlings. Pag sila masusunod, it's all hybrid seedlings because they they import. I don't know why they like importation. Sometimes they I call them Department of Importation. Uh, and then they import uh, chemical fertilizer. Yun lang dalawang yun ang major sa National Rice Program. Chemical fertilizer, which is bad for the soil. 38% of the soil of the Philippines is degraded. And I asked the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, how do you solve the degradation of the soil? And they answered, compost all your waste and bring them back to the soil. So there is really a need for composting. But unfortunately, every time you make the budget, you don't give uh, a budget to the Bureau of Soil and Water Management to distribute composting facilities all over the Philippines. Oh, because we can produce fertilizer in the Philippines by composting. 50% of our waste are uh, kitchen and garden waste, which can be turned into organic fertilizer. So if we gave every municipality in the Philippines to do composting, they don't have to be, buy all their fertilizer. They can just make it. Uh, and at the same time, our uh, animal producer, livestock and poultry, they can produce organic fertilizer also from kitchen, uh, from ma chicken manure and uh, other animal manure. But their complaint, I went to Batangas, they are producing organic fertilizer out of uh, chicken manure, the DA won't buy them 
nag-i-invoke sila ng certain uh, permit to buy from them, which I don't understand. So I'm telling this to you just to inform you of what you have do, to do. Maybe when you give 30 billion to the National Rice Program, you break it down. Maybe you allocate a certain amount for hybrid seedlings and inbred seedlings, and then you you give uh, the fertilizer to Bureau of Soil and Water Management instead of importing all inorganic fertilizer. Kasi po yung inorganic fertilizer will destroy our soil. Oh. And uh, in, in France, I always uh, go to France to observe their uh, agriculture because they are very fond of agriculture even if it's a first world country kasi uh, uh, mahilig sila sa pagkain. Uh, they, they forbid the use of inorganic or chemical fertilizer already. Kasi daw yung kinikita nila sa kanilang crops uh, na, na dahil sa fertilizer, eh kulang pa para linisin nila yung ilog nila na, na popolute ng chemical fertilizer. Kaya ayaw na nila. At saka yung soil nila na nasisira ng chemical fertilizer. So, uh, Your Honor, with your permission, I just want to inform you, you've consumed 11 minutes already. You might want to ask a question. No? Yeah. So, because, you know, I can ask this in the in the uh, the budget, but they are the policy making, so they have. In fact, everything you've said, we agree uh, with your honor that we so, prioritize. So, yun the lang ang, so. ano, yun lang ang gusto kong sabihin, and uh, and at the same time, I just want to question the CIDA law. Kasi yung CIDA law, it's the first law I pass, and malaki problema natin sa sugar. The sugar. Oo. And uh, this, this, uh, the Senate President asked me to discuss this. Under the CIDA law, uh, they have a, the sugar industry has a what, two billion budget every year. One billion for, uh, what we call this, uh, uh, infrastructure in the sh sugar producing provinces. 300 million to land bank for loans to sugar farmers. 300 million to the black farm for land. Uh, for the ARBs, they call the farm of the ARBs as black farm, and 300 million for mechanization, 100 million for training. So you can see that meron na namang mechanization kasi that's very important to the competitiveness. But w when I saw your budget, uh, there's no budget specifically for the sugar industry. Pinaghiwahiwalay nyo to. So we want to make it clear uh, where the CIDA law is in your budget. Yun. And then, of course, another question is the CDA. Oh, kasi sa coconut industry, uh, coconut farmers and industry development fund, uh, nakalagay doon, uh, we will give uh, 5% of the budget or 250 million to CDA to for them to form cooperatives. Oh, and uh, because unlike in the uh, rice industry, there are plenty of cooperatives, but in the coconut uh, uh industry there are no cooperatives so we have to form cooperatives so because we cannot do uh processing without cooperatives and we cannot do the dairy industry intercropping without cooperatives because that is being done by cooperative so I say from my experience hindi kayo naging definite dito in fact you're giving a budget to CDA to help cooperative parang binasa ko po yung yung the law that created cooperative they are for forming cooperative and managing helping them manage better the cooperative but never to give projects to cooperative why yung 250 million binigay nila sa isang cooperative ng coconut farmers instead of forming cooperative so I just want to mention this to you so you will be guided accordingly and maybe you can answer me on what you hope to do to solve this problem. These are my only question. Anybody can answer? Uh, Sec. Arcee, I know it's... Uh, by the way, I just want to mention to the body, congratulate Sec. Arcee. Tonight he's receiving the Outstanding Alumnus Award at the from the UP Alumni Association. Congratulations, uh, Sec. Arcee. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, uh, if I may just respond, uh, Mr. Chair. Chair, I... I think I'm wearing my hat as an agriculture uh, uh, researcher. Uh, 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 what you have uh, mentioned, ma'am, is uh, uh, about uh, preference for importation of seeds. I think that has been also a uh, a kind of uh, uh, perspective that I have that we hold because we know that in agriculture, oh, napaka uh, napaka sensitive. Yung mga uh, plants are very sensitive to to soil, to climate, to uh, pest, and these are localized. These are localized. So if you import seeds from abroad to plant it here, they are not likely to perform as well as where where they come from. So if you are seeing seven tons per hectare in China for other hybrid seed, you don't won't see it here because their conditions are different. So we the way to do is to import the seeds 
further develop it here uh, through what we call applied research. But unfortunately, we are not putting money to research to develop those uh, kind of technologies. Uh, Phil Rice is doing that. Is that well, doing Phil that Rice can do that. I, I, I can, they, that's what they should be doing. And I am glad that actually they are uh, moving in that direction. But that has been... Very supportive of Phil Rice. They're very uh, good people supporting the rice industry. Yeah, that has been a, a major concern uh, uh, for a long time, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, and we really need to put in more resources into developing technologies that are appropriate for our local conditions. For example, it has been a long practice in agriculture uh, in DA uh, that when they develop a prescription for, uh, for say, fertilizer, it's the same fertilizer uh, prescription everywhere in the country. And that doesn't work. At least from my background as an agriculture graduate, it doesn't work because the conditions are so different. You have to develop packages of technologies appropriate for its uh, for its uh, regions, for its uh, locality in the country. So That's why the president has included the soil laboratory exactly. in, the, uh, in the budget. Yeah. I, yeah, in I the was past here when he approved that. Yes. So. In the past, ma'am, what they do, that's why our agriculture is not so responsive to the demands of farmers, is that Whenever there are uh, uh, soil deficient, uh, nutrient deficiencies in one place, what they do is, say, in Mindanao or in Cebu, they'll bring it to Manila to, uh, to test. That was some time ago. I don't know if that has changed now. And by the time the solution, the, the result of the lab has comes out, the, the, the plants already di, you know, uh, uh, already died. I mean, that this, the production cycle has already come. So the system, in, in other words, uh, uh, Mr. Chase uh, was then not so responsive to the, to the actual situations that farmers uh, uh, faced uh, across the land. Uh, and so uh, our appeal is that uh, we provide more more resources to to to. to our agencies that do produce technologies, appropriate technologies for uh, the various uh, places of the country. Uh, we have the penchant for importing machines, for example, tractors. Uh, that would be appropriate for haciendas, but would not be appropriate for for small farms in my hometown, in my in my in my region, where you know the size of of paddies is are, are so small, uh, so small, no. Uh, so mga no, you have to just develop technologies that are appropriate for. Unfortunately, those technologies are not mana from heaven. We have to put in resources into those institutions that uh, are, uh, are responsible. And, and I think we can make state universities and colleges, for example, be more responsive to developing such technologies for uh, the regions where they are from. And Filmec. Filmec is the Philippine mechanization. They have been in existence for uh, 1995, though, so that's more than 30, almost 30 years. But uh, how come we are not performing well? So I think there are agencies in the Department of Agriculture which are assigned to that, but uh, uh, they are not, uh, they are just there. Na hindi sila, ano. I, I think a mechanization, because mechan lahat ng law natin may mechanization, so kailangan siguro encourage natin ang uh, establishment of mechanization companies in the Philippines kasi uh, nakita ko doon sa report nyo na of all the sector of the economy, yung industries ang napakaliit, 7%, di ba? Oh, At least, only 0.1% contribution to oh, GDP. Eh, samantalang lahat ng, ng budget natin uh, na sinulat ko, mechanization, because that's the idea of modernizing agriculture. You have to mechanize. Hindi na talaga pwede yung magtanim, ay di biro, maghapong nakaupo. Hindi na talaga, kanta yun eh, hindi na totoo yun eh. Oh, and I have a farm school and I have a tourist farm in my city, malaki Eh, hirap na hirap ako mag-manage ng tao eh, kasi hindi na nila type magtrabaho eh. So, ako talaga, if I have the machine, I will mechanize. Kasi mas madaling i-manage ang farm pag mechanize kasi mas efficient. So, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, between uh, Senator Villar, who chairs our DA and the Agriculture Committee and the Subcommittee of the Committee.